Okay, I found the short. Good news. Uh, so, what I did was um, I connected uh, the power to um, uh, to the 3.3 volt rail, and uh, I have adjusted the current limit on my power supply so that I wouldn't get uh, any overcurrent fault. And I slowly increased the voltage um, until I had around two and a half amps uh, running through the board. And I was uh, trying to feel where it would, where it was getting hot. And I couldn't find any, like, not a single place where the board was getting hot. But the wire itself was getting very hot. So that led me to believe that uh, there was a short somewhere where uh, there is very good uh, uh, heat, uh, heat sinking comp capability on the board. And um, two, of, two such places uh, are the driver chips, uh, which also happen to connect to this 3.3 volt rail. Uh, and if there was a short here, then uh, I wouldn't feel it uh, because this is the, connected directly to ground and all the heat will just dissipate to ground very, very rapidly. So I desoldered one of the chips completely and uh, that removed the short. So um, that's awesome. And uh, now I'm going to place this chip back and then hopefully I can flash the CPU. Uh, so let's see here. This is the place where the chip was, and there's probably have been some kind of solder bridge. Uh, I'm not really sure uh, exactly where the solder bridge was, uh, but it was somewhere here. Like possibly that the the fire the three point three volts was connected somewhere, maybe maybe directly to ground, but maybe um, somewhere where uh, that other pin. To which it was shorted uh, was then going to ground. So somehow there was a short underneath this chip. And uh, let's put it back now and see what we get. Let's see if we can power on the board. It when, the, when the pads have a little bit of solder on them because then the chip just slides and it slides into the grooves um, between the pads so this is really nice having fixed this short this probably took this was like the longest uh, search for a short that I've ever done I mean I've been looking at everything but um, I only looked at this, uh, these chips from the top. Because uh, I kind of didn't think to unsolder them and see if there was a short underneath them. But apparently there was a short underneath. soldering on this uh, chip, making sure that it's properly soldered. And I'm also going to solder on these chips which I removed. They, they are fine now. So if I had to do this search again, I would uh, look at the chips first. And uh, desolder the chips that could have uh, a solder bridge underneath. And then look at the most obvious sign of shorts. Uh, on other components.
again. So uh, I don't think we are entirely, um, like the shortest, I think there is something that's not quite right, but this is good enough, uh, this, is, uh, this is a high enough value. Because if I look at the, at the other, or actually this, this, could be, this could be the correct value though, um, I've been getting anywhere between uh, like 500 and 1200, uh, and on the other rail I have uh, infinite, uh, so on, on the 3v3 MCU there is infinite value. No way, no way. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? What the fuck just happened? Is there still a short? Damn, damn. Okay, so I'm not getting. Uh, so when I have it connected through the through the wires here, I'm I'm getting a higher value. But I think maybe could this be some? Could this be not connected uh, properly or something? Or maybe the wire. Maybe actually, actually, maybe the wire uh, burned because it got so hot. Damn. And maybe the wire got uh, disconnected on the inside. This was unfortunate. There's still a short. Or is there? Okay, so now, now it's... Maybe there isn't a short. Maybe this was fine. So why was I getting a, a beat before? Well, there is only one way to tell, uh, which is to power on the board. I'm going to remove the wires here, and uh, I'm going to power on the board and see if I'm getting any 3.3 uh, volts on the on the 3.3 volts rail. Okay. Let's see if we get 3.3 volts. the voltage. There is very low current consumption uh, because, let's see, uh, I'm, I'm not sure why, why that is. So I'm getting 3.3 volts on the MCU power supply, I'm getting 3.3 volts on the main power supply, but the current consumption is very low. Uh, so it could be that um, I need to um, solder the MCU more, uh, uh, I need to solder the MCU better, uh, but it could be something else as well. Maybe uh, because um, because I've been getting um, 
or maybe actually, maybe the reason I'm getting uh, infinite value is because there is uh, there are problems with connections uh, to the MCU. Uh, that could be the case. Um, so I need to I need to check this, but. Um, I'm going to try uh, to flash the MCU now, and maybe it works, uh, but I'm pretty, like, I'm almost 90% sure that it won't work, uh, because it's, um, it's quite strange that I'm getting uh, such a low uh, current consumption. So, uh, for flashing, I'm going to use an ST link uh, This is uh, one of these uh, really cheap ST links uh, which you can buy online, and uh, this connects directly to the uh, serial debugger port. Uh, on the uh, on the STM32, uh, and this will go to let's see. We have yellow, which is clock, uh, which goes to the clock, and this one goes to uh, the IO, and then we have the ground. So let's see if we get any LED blinking. And what we are getting here, so I'm running the, the flashing command, and what we're getting here is unknown chip ID 0, which uh, usually means that there is no connection. Uh, so I need to um, debug the connection um, between the MCU and the board, uh, which is probably the reason why I'm not getting anything. Uh, I don't think the MCU is powered. So usually I should be getting more current consumption. I should be getting like 100 milliamps. So let's see. I'm gonna reheat the, the CPU and um, I'm gonna just make sure that it's properly soldered. Because I, I, I had to desolder the, the CPU uh, when I was searching for the short. It's quite possible that I've uh, maybe messed something up. And maybe, um, or, no, actually I don't think it's anything to do with the resistors because I was measuring on the other side of the resistor. These are probably fine. It could be uh, that Perhaps the capacitors uh, for the uh, for the VCAT are not connected, or something, something like that. We'll see. First, I'll make sure that every single pin uh, is as well connected as possible. So I just go through every single pin and I heat it up. Uh, and make sure that it gets connected to the pad. Maybe I overheated the CPU. That could also be a, a problem. I've never had that issue before. But uh, you never know. Like uh, I've been heating this chip so much. Trying to desolder it and then solder it back again. Yeah, could be something like that as well. Maybe it's just not connected. It seems to me that perhaps 
this row, on this side, it seems to be a little bit um, too little solder on it. It's quite possible that uh, this is the problem. Yeah, I think I think that it's uh, one of the issues. We'll see. I'm going to do a little bit of wicking uh, because I have a lot of uh, solder on my wick so I can uh, actually make sure that the pins are connected by just dragging it close to the, uh, to the pads and uh, dragging the part of the wick that has the most solder just to make sure that I get some of the solder on the pads. Maybe this is it. Maybe this will actually work. While it's cooling down, I'm gonna just check uh, for connectivity. Huh, why are these two pins uh, connected to a 3 3 supply? Should that really be the case? Right, it should be. Uh, so I'm going to select this, uh, this nut now and, and see if I can make sure that I have all of the pins connected. It should be connected. Uh, so let's see what we get now. Uh, I'm going to power it on. And uh, I'm getting 0 0.02 amps. Fascinating. Is the chip broken? Or is it something else? Hmm. So, um... Let's measure uh, the voltage on um, different supply rails that go to the CPU. I have the reference voltage and I also have uh, the main CPU voltage. So it could be something like that. Or maybe, actually, uh, I'm going to check if I get any uh, contact with the chip now that I've soldered everything. So let's see. No contact. Okay. Back to debugging. Let's 
So, some of the things I'm going to check also is uh, connectivity between... Uh, let's see, first I'm going to check the power um, to make sure that I have, I have all the wheels running. So that's 3.3 .3 volts. Uh, that's good. Do we have... Uh, we should have 3.3 .3 volts there. And do we have 2.3 volts there? Yeah, we get 5 volts there and 3.3 .3 volts there. Could it be that uh, that actually the MCU got uh, destroyed when I had short from uh, 5 volt rail to 3 volt rail? That could have been the case if if the 3 volt rail of the MCU wasn't shorted uh, at that time. So it could have been uh, what has destroyed the CPU. I think it looks like the CPU is uh, pretty much done. There is power, but there is no um, there is no activity, and uh, there is no uh, current draw. Let's see. I could do a little test uh, to check if it's really the CPU. Um, I wonder if I have any CPUs uh, of this in this package that I could solder. Otherwise I would just solder the working chip for another board which I already made um, which, which I, where I already enabled all the power rails and uh, got the chip to work. Uh, so maybe I'll, I'll just desolder it from that board and put it on this board and just make sure that this board is working as well. Um, and then we can be sure that uh, it's the fault of the chip and not something else. But uh, first I will just check uh, the capacitors that go to the uh, V cap pins. And also the V bat. So I'm going to just make sure that all of the. Or actually, I think I already checked the V bat. Uh, so I just need to check uh, that. That one and that one. Right. That one and that one. Let's check uh, and see if this could be the issue. Actually, I'm, I'm going to check the voltage there first. Uh, so I have the. Uh, let's see. Check directly on the capacitors. It's C5 and C6. So where is my C5 and where is C6? C6 is over there. It's zero volt. And C5 is C4 and C5. Where is C5? Maybe this, uh, maybe this is somehow short of the ground. Uh, that, that could be, but I don't think that's the case. Uh, but I will check anyway. No, it's not short of the ground. Right. I think what happened, uh, most likely, what happened was that uh, when the when the power was uh, shorted from the five volt regulator to the MCU. Uh, regulator, it actually uh, busted the regulator inside the arm chip. Uh, I think that's probably what happened. Uh, but um, just to make sure that this board is okay now, um, what I'm going to do is um, move uh, the MCU from a board where I know it works uh, to this board. Let's just make sure that this board works. And I'll have to order uh, a few more MCUs. 
So, and we should get the lead. Yes. So we're getting the lead here. Uh, so this board is working. I'm going to desolder this CPU and put it on the other board. Uh, and, and see if that fixes the issue with the other board. Um, otherwise, it's something else, which would mean I would have to debug the other board. But this is the only chip I have left now. I don't have any other uh, working chips because the, the two chips that I had on the, uh, on the other boards are not working anymore. Yeah. They're not working anymore after I fixed all the shorts. Which is not surprising. Let's see, where are my gloves? Okay, time to get down to it and dissolve it. So this is the one that works. Uh, I'll desolder it and I'll solder it on the other board. And we'll see if it keeps working on the other board as well. a bit problematic to lift off the chip uh, and I try to make sure that uh, I have um, that all the solder has um, properly melted uh, before I do that because it can slide uh, to other components which is why it's a good idea not to place components too close to the chip because um, when lifting it off it's very easy for it to slide and uh, because everything is hot, uh, the other components can be totally messed up if the chip slides. So, um, so much for uh, manual soldering of the board. So much time spent looking for little solder bridges and shorts. It's almost at the point where I think it's probably not worth it. It's, um, better to just order the boards and uh, while they're manufactured, which, which can take a month, uh, and just do something else. But 
but since I've, I've already started this, I'm gonna finish it. And then I can evaluate how much time it actually took to get the manual soldered boards running. Maybe if I improve my uh, my stencil work, maybe then uh, it would be worth it. Because I think it, it, it's kind of it would have been worth it if uh, the only work I had to do was to um, uh, was to just uh, solder the components uh, on the paste that was uh, applied using the stencil. If everything worked uh, without any solder bridges anywhere, then uh, it would probably be worth it. But uh, the time it takes to debug. Uh, little uh, shorts here and there uh, is really making it uh, not worth it. Making it not worth the time uh, to spend on uh, just uh, ju just to get the boards quicker. Uh, unless it's really important to get them quicker. Okay, can I get this chip off now? Why is it not coming off? I think my my flux cylinder or my flux needle is stuffed, so it's not really giving me any flux. What happened to the flux needle? Why can I not get any flux out of it? Damn. Oh shit, damn, this was a lot of flux, so the needle is stuffed. There is something inside this needle that doesn't let anything through. Can I get this needle fixed? I need some wire or something. Find a wire that is suitable for this job. Or maybe I can find a needle. Maybe because of heating up, it actually got uh, solidified somehow. I don't know. Let's 
some flux coming out. There's something stuck in there. Most definitely. Something is stuck in there. that I may be used this needle before for solder face or something. And then I heated it up. Seems to be okay now. Yeah, much better. So, let's get some flux on this chip. And try to get it off. the most boring part of prototyping. starting to come off. Starting to come off a little bit. So this is the chip that works. And I'm going to try placing this chip on the board that, uh, that I fixed uh, where I had shorts um, even between the 5 volt and 3.3 volt rail. So there could be other things that are wrong with that board. But um, for, uh, for now I want to make sure that uh, that everything is fine on the CPU side, so that it's it's the CPU that broke that's broken and not uh, something else on the board. Uh, so in either case, if I move the chips, um, then once this chip is soldered on the other board, if it doesn't work, then it's something wrong with the board, and I can I can debug the board uh, until I get it working. Uh, so that's what I'm trying to do right now. And if the and if everything works, then I know that it's uh, the CPU that got uh, burned because I had the short from 5 volt rail to 3.3 uh, volt rail. Uh, so when I remove that short, uh, the CPU was broken. Or maybe they are sensitive to overheating. Like, I have it on 250 degrees now, um, and it could be that, because I have to heat them up quite long to get them off, maybe they are overheating. But we'll see. If this chip doesn't work uh, on the other board, um, maybe I'll try putting it back later. 
And if it doesn't work still, then it's uh, then it just got overheated. Can we get this chip off now? Come on. Yeah, now it's coming out. Awesome. So very slowly, I'm lifting it off uh, by corner, and then I will try to grab it with my tweezers from the side and uh, remove uh, or uh, melt all the other solder joints. All around the chip until I can lift it up. Right, cool. It's coming off. It's coming off. It's coming off. Awesome. So let's get this chip uh, on the other board. Let me this board here. Let me this board here. And I'm going to be solder the chip on this board. Trying to get the corner off the ground. It's um, still not hot enough. Now it's coming out. Okay, right. So hopefully I can just. It off pretty soon. make sure that I can grab it and not lose it. Awesome. Okay. So, let's just clean it up a little bit. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wake anything here. I'll just uh, make sure that the pads are reasonably um, good looking and uh, then I'll just place the other chip uh, on this area. Okay, let's make sure that it gets proper 
will drop. And I think it's looking good. It's a bit hard to get all the pins aligned when it's a QFT, a large QFT. But I think it, I think they look aligned. Most probably, if I look at them at the mi in the microscope, they, they won't be aligned. Let's move a little bit. Oh, no, 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 no. I actually, I actually misaligned the ship now. It was perfect. It was so perfect. The moment some pin um, solidifies, uh, it's no longer possible to move the chip, so it gets really annoying. I think it's perfect, perfectly in place right now, actually. So let's see. So now if this board works, then we know that it's uh, a broken CPU. We just need to order more CPUs. Take it from there. Okay, and it's time to just go over the pins and make sure that they're all connected. Some pins on this chip are slightly bent after wicking them too much. Hopefully I won't have any short on the bent pins. The pin that is bent is the is the boot pin, uh, so having that shorted doesn't really help much in getting the chip to work. It needs to be working properly.
Let's see. We got uh, 300 on the main uh, 33 power rail, and we got uh, 300 on the CPU power la uh, power rail. Uh, so um, this is what I would expect. Uh, it's a little bit low. It, it's, it seems to be different uh, on different boards, uh, but I think this board should power on. Let's see if it powers on and blinks the LED. And if it does, then we have a broken CPU. Okay, powering it on. No LED blink. On. No LED blink. LED no blink. So what is going on? So this is the CPU that worked on the other board, uh, but it doesn't work on this board. So something is going on here. Something is not right. Could it be that... Uh, oh, damn it. Could it be somehow that I got some burned bias or something. Or actually, that, that shouldn't be the case, because uh, I tested the voltage on different pins on the CPU, and I was getting 3.3 volts. So what is wrong with this board, uh, which is not wrong with the other board? Let's see. It's time to measure the voltages. So I'm getting 0 0.2 uh, or like 0 0.02 amps, 20 milliamps uh, current draw. And we have 3.3 volts there. We have 3.3 volts there. Um, and we should have 3.3 volts or, or 5 volts. Okay. I see. Yeah, I have 5 volts on um, that connector. But what is going on? Why is it not powering on? Could it really be that the capacitors are not connected or something? We got 3.3 volts on the, on the MCU. Maybe, maybe the MCU is in constant reset or something. Maybe the reset is shorted somehow. Uh, let's check uh, if the reset is... So the reset, uh, we can check the reset pin on this, uh, let's see, on this capacitor here. It's the pin that's closest to that. Uh, I'm gonna check this pin. And uh, if I figure out what the problem is, maybe it's the same problem with the, with the third board. Maybe the third board uh, does not connect to the debugger uh, because of the same issue. So we have the boot pin um, resistor, which is not supposed to be there. So I had an issue with booting um, when uh, this. It seems to be that this this shouldn't really be there. 
it's um, we could we could short uh, boot pin to ground to make sure that it always boots from the uh, from the flash. But I wonder if that is uh, really what's uh, what's going on. I think it's something else because even though even if it would boot to the system memory, it would still draw more current. Could it have something to do with the with the capacitors that go to the to the V cap? Maybe somehow the regulator is not starting on this chip because something is not connected. What could it be? Actually, it's this one that I need to uh, connect to to ground always. Uh, so I'm gonna remove R60. Or should I perhaps check um, everything else? Because I should at least be able to communicate with the chip. So the only thing that happens if, uh, if the boot pins have incorrect uh, default values is that I, I should be able to flash the chip, but then it won't boot from uh, flash, it will boot from the system memory. Uh, and I'm not getting that far either on this particular board. So this chip this chip works on another board, but it doesn't work on this board. So I need to figure out what the hell is going on here. So C5 and C6. Um, let's see if they are connected. So we've got C6 here. And um, this should go to pin number 71, or 106, 106. So where is this going? It's the pin at the bottom. So I'm going to check for connectivity between this one. I think that was C9. So C6. C5. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was correct. That was correct. So I'm going to check this one. Doesn't seem to be connected. Uh, because it's it's the third pin, right? From the edge. Yeah, it's supposed to be the third pin. And it doesn't seem to be connected to the capacitor. Well, maybe it's connected, but I'm, maybe I'm measuring on the wrong side. Let's see. I think I'm measuring on the right side. Oh, no, yeah. That one's connected, and C5 is probably also connected. Where's C5? Actually, 
actually, I'll tell you what. Uh, what I'm going to do instead is um, mount the other CPU on the other board and see if it works. Uh, if that works, then I can continue with this board later. But uh, I think it's going to be a pretty boring process to figure out what, what is going on there. Uh, so I'm going to mount this um, CPU on this board. Okay. my proper sponge to clean the tip. It's a lot of flux. That's good. Flux is like butter for the solar joints. I'm going to lift up this board by the corner and uh, drop this, this chip in place. Almost aligned. Not really aligned there. Let's see. A little bit misalignment there. But it's surprisingly aligned. All around. Oh, that's nice. So, I'm going to solder it. Almost done. I'm going to just make sure that there are no solder bridges. Check with the microscope just to make sure. So, looking around this chip, uh, no solder bridges anywhere. No. All looking pretty nice. Very good alignment. But also, I think maybe this is could this be soldered or maybe it isn't soldered. I don't know. It looks a bit unsoldered. Could be that actually, actually those pins are probably unsolded. So I have too little solder now on the pads. But 
that's not an issue. Oh, look at that. So that pin is slightly off. Slightly bent. But not, not enough to touch the pin on the side. That one is bent as well. All of that wicking. Uh, okay. I'll try to power it on. And if it doesn't work, then I'll uh, refolder the, the pins. Uh, so let's see, where is my connector? try to flash it uh, and then see if that uh, makes the LED blink. So we got, uh, let's see, clock, this is the yellow one, and the orange one is the IO and the ground. Get this connected. So, can we get some contact with the chip now? Nope. No contact. Uh, so, the thing that remains is to make sure that all the pins are soldered properly. For this, I'm going to use um, the. Let's see. For this, I'm going to use the solder that looks like this, so just uh, normal solder, and uh, I'm going to put a little bit of the solder on the tip of my soldering iron, and then I'll just uh, go over all of the pins on each side. I'm going to go a little bit, slightly away from the from the pins, uh, and just making sure that I get some reflow going there. So that the pins uh, get some solder on them. And I could use some um, flux actually, because it's getting pretty dry. That solder blob almost felt like wave soldering. I had to roll it over the pins until it was uh, completely exhausted and disappeared. Couldn't pick it up with my iron.
is a little bit more sober. Just go on the side. Oops. Got a few solder joints that got a blob here that rolls around. And it's, yeah, now it's, now it's gone. But I have to check this with a microscope later. Have a look at the pins now. And see if they're better soldered. Yeah, this definitely looks better. This looks like they're actually soldered. Although not all of them. Some of them look like they're not soldered. Like this one. Soldered, soldered. I think that looks like they're soldered. And there is a solder drum. Solder bridge. Right, so a few pins there that don't really look like they're connected. They probably are, but I still want to make sure that they are actually connected. Okay. And go to this side. It looked like they're soldered. Bit of a solder joint there. Yeah. I'm gonna go over them again. Just to make sure. Now they look like they're soldered. That one is not soldered. Let's get one soldered. So now that one should be soldered. Is it soldered? No, it's still not soldered.
looks like it's solder now. But it's ah no, still. Okay, that's that looks bad. I'm gonna make sure that it's actually soldered. I'm gonna put some solder on my uh, on the tip of my iron and then I'm gonna uh, clean the iron just once. So I still have a little bit of solder left, uh, but not too much. Damn, the power usage is even lower now. What is going on? Yeah, it's working! Have a look at that. It's working! Yay! So, uh, the CPU that I thought was broken actually does work. But it took a little bit of uh, soldering to get it working. Uh, so, um, I'm going to repeat this process now for the other boards, and uh, I'll see if I can get uh, all of them to work. So let's go back to the previous board. So, this CPU was supposed to work. So, I know for sure there is no problem with the CPU, but there is probably a problem with the soldering. So let's uh, check if the solder is plausible. Okay. Uh, what? Right. This is behind my terminal. Yeah, so this doesn't look like it's soldered properly. So I'm gonna have to do the same thing for this. Uh, oh, 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 why didn't, why didn't I check this with the microscope? So it looked much better than it is without the microscope, just by looking at it. So this is, uh, this needs to be fixed. The microscope is such a useful tool. I'm so glad that I got it. Um, I got the cheapest microscope that I could find because I thought that, oh well, maybe I'm not going to use it that much. But um, once I started using it, uh, I really don't want to have a lab without it. It's, it's like, it's so useful to check uh, little details like solder, um, for solder bridges and uh, to check the joints if they're good or not. Um, it's very nice very good tool. Okay, let's see if I can move this chip now. I mean, to the naked eye, this looks perfect. But through the microscope, this looks horrible.
So because the chip is soldered now um, on, on some of the pins, uh, it's a little tricky to, to move it. I should have moved it in place uh, before starting to solder it, and I should have checked that with the microscope that it's actually in place. Uh, but I didn't do that. Maybe I can move it now. Nope. Still not moving. perfectly stuck to the footprint. Not moving at all. So I try to heat it up all around the perimeter and a little bit in the middle of the chip. And eventually it should come up. And I only need to move it maybe one tenth of a millimeter. Can I get this chip moving? Come on. The chip likes the heat. It thinks it's cozy, so it doesn't want to move. Damn, this is really stuck to the board. Maybe I can get something else moving, so I can get a feel of when the solder is melting. Increase the temperature to 260. And a little bit more flux is probably a good idea. a lot of uh, flux being burned off. It's so nice to have a extraction of, of the smoke. And it's kind of melting but still not there. Still not completely melted. I need all of the pins to be uh, desoldered before I can move it. Otherwise I could bend some pins. I don't want to do that. This chip is going to be perfectly soldered by the time I'm done moving it. So 
everything is starting to reflow properly. But I still need to move it just a little bit because it's not entirely uh, straight. What is going on? Why is it not moving? Where is all the heat ex escaping? I can't even lift it up. Not even by the corner. Oh, now. Now it's moving. Now it's moving. Awesome. This probably was one, one pin or something that uh, was stuck. fairly quick at uh, getting back, getting stuck again. I need to be quick for this. Let's see. Come on. And the moment I start moving it, it actually gets stuck because the solder solidifies. So, I got that side. Oh, no, 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 no. It's so easy to move it too, too much as well. Um, I, I get it kind of almost in place and then because of the unevenness of the of the pads when they have solder on them it jumps a little bit and, it, and then it overshoots so um, very tricky process to get it entirely aligned but I think I'm almost there I think I'm there let's see I think I'm pretty much perfectly aligned now uh, I'm gonna check with the microscope Something that looks perfectly aligned uh, to the naked eye can be totally unaligned. So this side is a little bit unaligned, but it's it's kind of good enough. Uh, it's not too much, so I think all the pins should be perfectly connected once I solder them. Uh, and uh, this side is the same, but it's not really an issue. It's it's almost perfect. The important thing that I can um, that I can connect all the pins and not have any solder bridges. And I think this achieves that goal. Solder on my soldering iron, and uh, I'll clean it once. Just dip it into the uh, into the copper sponge once, and then I have a little bit of solder on the tip, which is enough to get something solder. I almost got sucked into the film extractor. That would actually be a fun idea for a children's story. Life inside the human structure. The story of a uh, solder residue particle inside the human structure hanging out with activated coal. And never getting out again. Then, that'll be a scary story. A scary bedtime story.
Is this solid now? Okay, I'm gonna check if this is solid now. I think it looks like it's mostly solid. Let's see. Although these pins are, they don't look like they're fully soldered. Ah, it doesn't look like they're fully soldered. I think I think I need a little bit more. I'm gonna put this here. Let's see. I need to go back to using the flux that I have uh, that's called Amtec flux in a can. It's probably not Amtec flux, but it's definitely better flux than this. It's much better at um, making things flow. However, it, it leaves a lot of residue, which is one of the reasons I don't like it. Could this chip actually start working now? Maybe it's time to check. I don't think everything is soldered properly though. Kind of looks like it's soldered, but you will see some of the pins they don't really look like they're soldered. Damn, I need to fix it. Um, maybe, uh, maybe I could take some uh, Maybe I could take some solder paste. Is that really a good idea? A little bit of solder paste. Let's see if this glows uh, a bit better. Maybe this actually is precisely what I need. Actually, I'm gonna get some of this solder paste and just get it on my soldering iron.
Okay, so just a quick look. Looks much better. I think this looks like it's soldered. Yeah, definitely. A big question. Oh, damn. Damn. Oh, fuck it. There is a huge solder bridge on the other side of the fence. Actually, I'm going to use my other flux uh, for this now. So this is my other flux. It's uh, in a cap. And uh, it tends to work better for uh, wicking. Actually, it tends to work better for a lot of things. Uh, it's, it somehow makes the, the solder flow better. But it's also more messy.
Okay. better. There's still some solder behind the pins there, but it's much better now. At least it doesn't form any solder bridges. These ones still don't look like they're soldered. I try not to drag the, uh, the wick uh, across the pins. Okay, let's see. Is this finally much better? Damn, it doesn't look like they're actually catching up on the bats. Maybe I should have cleaned the bats completely. Okay, yeah, this one looks better. This side looks much better. I think it's time to test. Uh, I think uh, this is almost as good as it can get. And if it doesn't work, then I'll have to continue trying to make sure that all the pins are connected. Okay, connecting this one, this is uh, going to block, and orange goes to the I.O., and the brown is the brown. I plug this into my laptop, and I power it on. Damn. Still has very low current usage. So yeah, and uh, it doesn't work. So there is something wrong with the board, I think, uh, with this one, because the chip here is um, functional. I have tested it on the other board, but uh, it's not working when connected on this board.
And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna check uh, if all of the ground connections to the chip are uh, intact. And um, and I may check more uh, things that I uh, that I come up with. Uh, but uh, it's it's quite strange actually that it doesn't work because there is not much here that. Uh, that could be broken because it does have power. Uh, there is uh, there is 3.3 volts going to it on the on all of the pins, which should have power. So the only thing I can think about is uh, that it's probably not soldered on. But um, I'm going to stop this video now, and I, I'll continue debugging this uh, off camera. And uh, in the next video, I will post an update on how that went. So thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. And have a good day.